open our minds, O Lord, that we may know you. Open our hearts, that we may love you. Open our lives, that we may take your love to the world. Amen. Amen. Before I begin, I should acknowledge, I want to acknowledge that both the epistle reading and the gospel have some really odd and problematic and perplexing stuff in them that I'm not going to talk about. <laughs> I just want you to know that I didn't ignore it, but I was drawn to our Hebrew scripture reading for this morning. And so um, I'm going to be talking about that today. The readings from the Hebrew scriptures, both last week and today, invite us into unsettling encounters. Last week, the word of the Lord comes to Abram in a vision, promising to give Abram many descendants. This mysterious word, mysterious because it is not at all clear how this will come to pass, prompts Abram to offer sacrifices, giving bodily expression to the radical change that is occurring in Abram's life. And if that were not enough, Abram falls into a deep sleep, and we are told a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. And the presence of God slices through Abram's sacrifices in the form of a fire pot and a flaming torch, signaling the start of this new relationship, a covenant between this human being and the Most High God. And this week, one of the descendants of Abram has his own unsettling encounter, seeing a bush that blazes but is not consumed, and hearing the voice of God call him by name, Moses, Moses. Like his ancestor, Moses comes into the presence of God who is beyond understanding, whose word brings unimaginable and unsettling changes in one's life. Like Abram, Moses will never be the same again. This encounter of Moses with God on Horeb, which is another name for Sinai, is one of the most profound stories in scripture, and it's one that I've always loved. It, like the story of Abram, is a classic example. I can take this off. <laughs> Like the story of Abram, it's a classic example of what the scholar Rudolf Otto called the Mysterium Tremendum et Fascinans. It is the mystery which causes us to tremble with fear and yet toward which we are inevitably drawn. We hide our face like Moses and yet we long to come closer like a moth to the flame. Lent is, I think, a season in which we are called to come into the presence of the mystery of God, a mystery which, if we are honest, deeply unsettles us. This season of repentance invites us to consider the ways in which we need to be transformed by God and led into uncharted territory. This story of Moses and the burning bush and others like it invite us to imagine how that might happen. If we look closely, this story offers a pattern for transformation. Not a formula, not a guaranteed solution, but a way of being that opens us to mystery. This could be the pattern of our lives with a God who is beyond our understanding and who loves us without limit. So first, Moses goes about his daily life. He takes care of business, in this case, keeping the flock of his father-in-law. 
It is a reminder that ordinary life is not an obstacle to encountering God, but it is the place where God happens. This is not to say that seeking out sacred places and engaging in sacred worship is not important, but rather that what we learn in those sacred places and in these sacred times of worship is meant to be lived out in our ordinary, daily, mundane, daily existence. We should expect to meet God in that existence, in the flocks, in our daily lives. The next part is that Moses notices. He notices something unexpected. A glimmer of flame catches his eye and he stops to pay attention to it. Now you may ask how Moses could possibly have missed seeing a burning bush in the wilderness, <laughs> point taken, but who knows where this blazing bush was or what exactly it looked like. The thing is that Moses paid attention and he turned aside to look at it more closely. He didn't just shake his head or hide his eyes, convince, convincing himself that he was just imagining things. He didn't just continue on his way. He paid attention. He was curious. He wondered, what is this thing? What is happening here? Every day, every moment of our lives, there's something to pay attention to. The crocuses sneaking up out of the ground in a hidden corner of the yard, the sound of birds in the morning, the person without shelter huddled in a doorway, the news of war in Ukraine, the unexpected opportunity to meet someone or to go to an event. We cannot pay attention to everything, but we can cultivate the practice of noticing where we are, attending to something new or out of the ordinary. Each of these things is a potential word from God. It is when we notice and we turn aside that something can happen. Because in the story, when Moses does this, God calls out. God calls this descendant of Abraham by his name. Out of the thing that Moses notices, out of his wonderment, comes encounter. Because Moses has paid attention, he is primed to hear something new from God and he hears it spoken directly to him. God knows Moses, knows his deepest self, and by calling Moses' name, God reveals that self as holy and beloved. To call someone by name is to desire response from that person to desire relationship. And this is what Moses does. Respond. And notice that the response is simple. Here I am. It doesn't promise anything. It just acknowledges that I'm here, I'm listening, and that is enough. So when we hear the voice of God, However that comes, it might just be enough to say, here I am, whoever we are, however we are, whatever our limitations, we are enough. You don't have to promise God the world or pretend to be more gung-ho than you are. Just show up. Just listen. God has called your name, which means that God wants a response from you and longs for relationship with you. 
So notice, turn, listen, respond. And at this point, it's appropriate to feel a little bit of trepidation because you don't know what God is going to say next. The story tells us that, God, that Moses felt this. He hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Not afraid of God, but afraid to look God in the eye. When you are addressed by the creator and sustainer of the cosmos, it is natural to feel a little overwhelmed. But no fear, this will not stop God. For when we notice and turn and listen and respond, there comes this call to embody this new relationship with the Most High God. God, knowing and calling Moses' name, knowing Moses' deep identity, has a job for Moses. God sees oppression and misery in the world and says to Moses, I will send you. Now, Moses, like most of us, is not convinced that this work is for him. Who am I, he asks. Have you gotten me mixed up with some other Moses working the flocks in Midian? This is not who I think I am. I am not equipped to do this work. But God knows otherwise. God knows who Moses is better than Moses knows himself. Just as God knows and holds our true selves more deeply than we can ever imagine. God, as the great and holy I am, sustains and orders our I am. Who am I? becomes I am God's. So this is the pattern. Live our ordinary lives, pay attention, turn toward the unexpected, listen, and claim the work God gives each of us to do. And here's the thing, we don't have to do everything. We cannot do everything. Not everything is our work to do. Although Moses was called to do a big thing, it was his thing. It was the task God gave him to do. It was the task that revealed itself to him as he was going about his ordinary life, noticing, turning, listening, and responding. So what each of us is called to do with our encounter with the mysterious God will reveal itself out of the fabric of our everyday life, out of the unique tapestry that is each of us. It is the noticing, the turning, and listening that will help us sort out the noise of 10,000 needs and possibilities and hear the one thing that is necessary in that moment. But when you hear it, you will know. And you will be able to say, here I am. <laughs>